give God our Father all the praise. We give God all the glory. It is with joy and gladness of heart that I'm welcoming you to the day seven of the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit, a pre edition. I want to welcome you to the Reporters Ministry channel. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube page and liked our Facebook page, um, please consider doing so. There are a lot of rich materials for you to learn from. And also visit us on AudioMark, on Instagram, on Telegram for updates about that which the Lord is doing with us in the reporter's ministry. My name is Olushola Ademola, and it's a pleasure to welcome you on behalf of every disciple into today's fellowship. We have the opportunity for interaction and participation because it's a fellowship. We are hoping that by the grace of God, the sharing together of the Holy Spirit will be with us all, even tonight. Hallelujah. We have a wonderful message for you. By the grace of the Almighty God, today we are discussing Holy Spirit, the source of divine utterances. Holy Spirit, the source of divine utterances. Glory be to God forevermore. All right, so on this note and um, concerning this truth, are we going to be fellowshipping today by the grace of God and um, uh, by the spirit of truth, our fellowship will be with the Father and even with his Son, Jesus Christ. And all this will be by the spirit of, of truth. Glory be to God. Let's give God thanks. Let somebody give God praise. Give God thanks. Appreciate his name. He is the Lord God Almighty. Appreciate his name. Bless the name of the Lord. Tell him thank you. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. The Lord God Almighty has brought us onto the seventh day of the fellowship. This April edition, let's give God thanks. Let's appreciate. Let's give God thanks. Let's appreciate his name. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's the Lord God Almighty. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no God like you, our Father. There is no God like you. Eternal God, there is no God like you. You are the one who existed from the beginning. Yes, you existed from the beginning. The word of God says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Let's give God praise and appreciate. Let's give God praise and appreciate. Let's thank God for all the continents of the world, the continent of Africa. Let's thank God for the continent of Africa and in all, their, in all its division, divisions. The West Africa, South Africa, the Northern Africa, the Eastern Africa. Let's give God praise. Let's appreciate him for that which the Lord, our Father, do it as it concerns Africa. Let's thank God for Europe. Let's thank God for Europe. Let's thank God for Europe. The entire United Kingdom. Ireland. Turkey. Let's thank God for Europe. Let's bless his name. For Germany, France. All the nations in Europe. Let's give God praise. Let's install his name. Let's appreciate him who is the king of kings. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank God for Northern America. Let's thank him for the United States of America. Let's thank him for Canada. Let's thank God for the Southern America. Let's bless the name of the Lord for all the nations under that continent. Let's bless the name of the almighty God. Father, we thank you to bless your name, to glorify you, to glorify your name. You are the one who seated on the encircle of the earth, and the people, they are like grasshopper before you. You seated at the encircle, on the encircle of the earth, and the people are like grasshopper before you. 
That's what the book of Isaiah told us. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the Asia continent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For the most populous nation in the whole world, China. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you. That continent is housing major, most populous nations in the world, like China, like India. We give you the praise, like Russia, some part of Russia. We bless your name, Holy Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And also it contains the most historic nations in the world. Israel. Let's give God praise. Iran. Iraq. Blessed be your name, Lord. Let's thank God for the Australia continent. We thank you for the Australia continent. We thank you for the Atlantic. We bless your name. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and everything that is in it. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the floods. You have founded the earth upon the sea and established it upon the, upon the floods. We thank you for everything. Thank you for the sea, the Mediterranean. Thank you for everything. Blessed be your name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Thank you for the vegetation. Thank you for the earth. Thank you for the art. Thank you for that which your spirit is holding together. You sustained all things by the word of your power. By the word of your power, all things are sustained. They are hold up. Blessed be your name. Glory be to you, Father. We appreciate you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have given thanks. Let's speak a word of prayer over the all the nations of the earth. The exact prayer we prayed yesterday. Let's pray it again. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the gospel of Jesus Christ pursue after the captivity of the wicked, pursue after the lies and the falsehood of the evil one. Let the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ Pursue after the deceit of the wicked one and let it overtake and recover your people from all their bondages in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and tell it to God. When the Lord Jesus rose from the dead in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible told us he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts on the, unto men. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive. That is, the Lord made the captors to become a prisoner himself. He made the captors to become a prisoner himself. Let whatever has held the people of God in prison, let such a thing go into prison itself by the gospel, by the preaching of the gospel, go into prison, go into prison, go into prison in this age, go into prison, go into prison. Lies of the wicked one. Lies of the wicked one. Deceit of the wicked one. Doctrines of demons. False doctrines, false prophecies, false teachings. Activities of false prophets. Go into captivity. Go into captivity. Go into captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. We proclaim by the gospel, by the preaching of the gospel, the release of the people of God all over the world. The release of the people of God all over the world. Let there be light. In all assemblies, in all denominations that are headbound in satanic doctrines. 
in all every denomination head bound the satanic doctrines everywhere called the church that people are bounded in lies in doctrines of men in heresies bounded in falsehoods in the name of jesus christ of nazareth by the preaching of the gospel you are being pursued and overtaken and bounded be bounded in the name of jesus we proclaim the release according to god's word in isaiah chapter 60. it says the spirit of the sovereign lord is upon me he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and among god that he has anointed him to do is to proclaim liberty to the oppressed and release of prison open of prison to the captives everyone that has been captured by false doctrine lies from the pit of hell by the preaching of the gospel all over the world be released all denominations as long as you say that jesus christ is your lord and your god let there be light it doesn't matter the level of your backsliding and the years of your backsliding. The Lord restored Israel after 70 years. If he can restore after 70 years, he can restore after 700 years. He can restore after 1,000 years. Every denomination that had their foundation in God, that had their foundation in Christ, but have become backsliding, they have become heretic and gone into darkness and captured by Satan. Let there be light proclaiming your release by the preaching of the gospel, the word of truth. For you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whosoever the Son shall make free shall be free indeed. By the gospel, open your mouth, somebody, and pray. For everywhere I call the church all over the world. It doesn't matter the name of the denomination. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter their theology or their dogma. As long as from their inception, they said they are of Christ. And in fact, the whole earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. Light. Light. Let the truth of God permeate gain entrance into all denominations in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you lord in jesus christ's name we are praying the word of the lord said to us in the book of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 50 the people of god were led astray by shepherds they were led astray by shepherds and the lord said that he will come and shepherd them all by himself he said i will come and shepherd them i'll find the scripture for you in a moment and then we'll pray one more prayer jeremiah chapter 50. let me just turn my bible there in a minute Jeremiah 50, let me find the accurate verse. Hmm. Um, let me read verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherd have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from my from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Verse 7. All that found them devoured them, and the adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Hmm. There is a verse that the Lord said, I will shepherd them. I hope that is not in the book of Ezekiel because we have it in Jeremiah and then we have also have it in Ezekiel. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. There is a prayer we ought to pray here. 
Let's call upon the name of the Lord and say to him, Deliver your people from strange prophets, false shepherds, false pastors, who are satanic agents. They work for the devil. They work for the devil. A man of God said, called by God, used by Satan. A man of God. He said, a man can be called by God and used by Satan. These people, they work for Satan. Definitely, they work for the devil. We want to ask God that the Lord will deliver his sheep from their hands. Open your mouth and pray to God Almighty. All over the earth, in this age, this age is my concern. And it's our concern because it's the concern of the Holy Ghost. And of course, it is the concern of the Holy Spirit because he is the one that worketh in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Go to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Let's lift up our voice that the Lord will deliver his people. I saw a writing by Evangelist Tundi Aluko. And he said, called by God, used by Satan. What a powerful message. What a powerful word. That the Lord will deliver his sheep from these foxes. He will deliver his sheep from these foxes. That the Lord will deliver his sheep from these foxes. That the hand of God Almighty will deliver his sheep from these foxes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, you will deliver your sheep from these foxes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will deliver your sheep from these foxes. Everyone feeding on the sheep that are not shepherds of the sheep. Jesus said in John chapter 10 that these are hirelings. They are hirelings. They are not the shepherd of the sheep. They saw the wolves coming and they flee. That the wolf may deliver. That the wolf may devour. They are wolves. They are hirelings. Because the hirelings, they see the wolves coming. And then they flee away. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. John 10 verse 12. Verse 11 and 12. John 10, 11 and 12. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life to the sheep. For the sheep. But he that is a hireling. And not the shepherd who own the sheep are not. See the wolf coming and leave the sheep and flee it. And the wolf catcheth them and scatter them. The hireling fleeth, verse 13, because he is a hireling and care not for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And I am known of mine. Let us call upon the name of the Lord. Let us call upon the name of the Lord that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the sheep of God, the church of God, all over the world, anywhere that has their foundation in God, we have authority to ask God to intervene in their religion, in their denomination. The Lord has the right to intervene. Whatever they call themselves, Eastern Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, all the Protestant churches put together, all the Evangelical churches put together, all the Charismatic churches put together, Pentecostal churches put together, the Aladura churches put together. Every one of them, it is they are the jurisdiction of Christ. They are the jurisdiction of the Holy Ghost. If there is anyone at all in other generation, who has ever prophesied by the Spirit of God. Even the Jews are the jurisdiction of Christ. For Caiaphas, their high priest at the time, in the days of Jesus, prophesied by the Holy Ghost. They are all the jurisdiction of Christ. And if the Jews can come to Jesus, there is no way I call a church that cannot come to Jesus, no matter the level of their backsliding. 
Father, let there be light in all the denominations. And let there be deliverance from your people, for your people. From the hands of false shepherd, evil shepherd, occultic, demonic, satanic shepherds. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are working for their father, the devil. Claiming that they are working for God. Every minister working for Satan. Deliver your people from their hands. Let the people see light. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the people see light. Eli, let the people see light. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Glory be to God forevermore. Praise God. Praise God. Ezekiel 33, I will read some verses. Let me begin. Ezekiel 34, rather, I mean to say. 34, let me begin with verse 2. Son of man, Ezekiel 34, verse 2. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the, the Lord God, unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves and not the shepherds. That do feed themselves. Let me read it to you. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Glory be to God. Verse 3. Ye eat the fat, ye clothe yourself with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye fed not the flock. Verse 4. The disease that have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Verse 5. They were scattered because there is no shepherd. Although they have a physical figure. But spiritually there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all beasts of the fields. When they were scattered. My sheep wandered throughout all the mountains. And upon every hill, every high hill, yea, my flock were scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Verse 7, therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 8, as I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherd fed themselves and fed not my flock. Verse 9. Therefore, O ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God. Behold, I am against the shepherd, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may not be meat for them. For thus said the Lord God. Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep, and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that is among his sheep, they are scattered that um that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the from the people and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers. And in all the inhabited places of the country. Verse 14. I will feed them in a good pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. They shall lie in a good fold. And in a fat pasture they shall feed upon the mountains of Israel. Verse 15. I will feed my flock. And I will cause them to lie down. See the Lord God. Verse 16. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away, and we bind them up that which was broken, and we strengthen that which was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong, I will feed them with judgment. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. And so shall it be. Upon our age, the flock shall be delivered. The Lord will raise them shepherds. 
and pastors after his own heart to feed his people in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Glory be to God. Let's go right now into let's go right now into doctrine and um, if God speaks to you about anything in the fellowship feel free to discuss with us especially if you are live with us right now and even if you have a question you may ask on using the chat box uh, at any time you are saying this it will be answered God's willing Today, we are discussing Holy Spirit, the source of divine utterances. Holy Spirit, the source of divine utterances. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, in the matter of divine utterances, for us as a Christian, it usually comes in two ways. Number one, as a prophetic word. In a language that people can understand. Or in a language that people cannot understand. But which can be interpreted by the power of the Holy Spirit. Which is called speaking in other tongues. The divine utterances that comes from the Holy Ghost are characterized by truth. And they are truth. They are characterized by truth. The nature, the substance of those utterances are truth. And in fact, in person, they are truth. So divine utterances by the Holy Ghost are characterized by truth, characterized by truth as nature. And they are truth. That's the person, essence. Truth. And this agrees with the word of God in John 17, 17. John 17, 17, which says, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So what is truth? Truth is the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the source of the word of God. Spoken at anywhere, at any time. Let me say that again. The Holy Ghost is the source of the word of God spoken at anywhere and at any time. You find the word of God in Australia, that is by the Holy Ghost. Not America or Africa or Europe or Asia or South America or Antarctica, that is by the Holy Ghost. 5,000 years ago, that's by the Holy Ghost. If Jesus tarried, 700 years to come, it will be by the Holy Ghost. Only by the Holy Spirit can truth be spoken on the earth. Only by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the vitality of all the holy angels the vitality of all the holy angels that's why they can speak truth the holy spirit is the vitality the quickening power it is the spirit that quickened it you remember john chapter 6 verse 63 it is the spirit that quickened it and that is not only applicable on the earth it is also applicable in the heavens it is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. 
the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are life-giving spirit. Glory be to God forevermore. Therefore, anywhere there is truth, which is the word of God, I do not say anywhere you find what is correct. I do not say anywhere you find what is what is historically accurate. I do not say anywhere you find what is um, geologically correct or accurate or archaeological evidential that has archaeological evidence. I said the truth is the word of God. And it will always be contested in the heart of the ungodly. The heart of the natural mind cannot accommodate and does not support, does not align with the truth. And you will know why in a few minutes. Truth is the word of God. Anywhere you see the word of God in nature, in essence, in power, in verity, that is sincerity. Anywhere you find the word of God in nature, the nature is the word of God. In power, it is the word of God. In essence, it is the word of God. In verity, that sincerely is the word of God. Anywhere you find such a thing that is by and can only be by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the source the only source of the truth. Anybody at any age, at any time, that is privileged by grace to speak truth has done that by the Holy Ghost. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Once again, it can be prophetic in an utterance that the community can easily understand it can be in other languages that it will take the power of God to interpret what was said. Glory be to God forevermore. In the book of Mark, chapter 12 and verse 36. Um, let me read from verse 35. And then we'll go to where the scripture is found in the book of Psalm. Mark 12, 35 to 36. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? Verse 36. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, statement of that. David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. What did Jesus say? He said that David said that by what? By the Holy Ghost. What did David say? The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy full stool. That's prophetic. Fulfilled in Christ after he rose from the dead. Let's go to the book of Psalm 110 where we have the scripture. Psalm 110 verse 1. It's a Psalm of David. In that book of Psalms, Psalm 110, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. We couldn't read here that and David was in spirit and he began to prophesy and he said, we didn't read any of that. Anywhere you find truth, the word of God. Anywhere you find truth, it can only come by the Holy Ghost. 
It takes someone that is filled with the Holy Ghost. To be filled with the Holy Ghost means to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Do you hear what I said? It is not only believers that can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Unbelievers can be moved to speak the word of God even though they don't have the Holy Ghost. They have not received the Holy Spirit as a gift. But the Spirit of God can move on them. And then they will speak by the Holy Ghost. No human being on the earth can by themselves speak truth. No man can speak truth by themselves. Truth is found in Christ. For the law is by Moses. In John 1, 17 and 18, the law is by Moses. But grace and truth is by Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the very word of God. Grace and truth is by Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the very word of God. No man had seen God at any time. Nobody had seen God at any time. Only the begotten son, who himself is God, which is in the bosom of the father, he proceeded from the father, has declared God. So Jesus is truth personified. And anywhere you find truth, only the spirit of Jesus can make that happen. And that spirit of Jesus is what you call the spirit of the Lord. That is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Anytime you see an angel come deliver a message, that angel has been quickened by the Holy Ghost. Nothing speaks truth except by the word of God, by the spirit of God, I mean to say. Even the ass of Balaam, you know the ass of Balaam was not born again. That spoke and was made to see that which is of the word of God. The substance is of the word of God. Was by the spirit of God. The Bible says that the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. It must be by the Lord. And that Lord is the spirit. My goodness. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The Lord that opened the mouth of the donkey of Balaam was the Holy Ghost. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, taken of the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. That's why you call him the spirit of the Lord. And where the spirit, my goodness, my goodness, the Lord is equal to the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Glory be to God. Anybody on the earth that speaks truth has done so by the spirit of the Lord. By the Spirit of the Lord. Glory be to God. And you have to know the Word of God, the Bible, so that nobody can deceive you whether their utterances are divine from heaven or whether they are from Satan. Whether their utterances are divine from heaven or whether they are from Satan or from the human spirit, a man can speak what is correct, what is Theologically, geologically, archaeologically, philosophically, medically correct. You hear me? Irajaman, Jariba, Irajaman. But to speak truth, the word of God, which a theologian can fight you for, a medical, medical person can fight you for it, archaeology can contest it, philosophy can say no to it, all right? Science can contradict it, but truth is above all. At the end of it all, not at the inception, men will come back to find out that the truth is also correct. The truth is also a fact. 
But from the beginning, men argues the truth. And they say, it is not possible. Medically, you can't come back from the dead after four days. Not to talk of come back from the dead after three days without any age. You pick up your life. Your, your, your life is gone from you. And then you can say, I can pick it up. I lay it down and I pick it up again. It is medically impossible. But that is the truth. So also, it is medically impossible, scientifically impossible, that the dead will rise on the last day. It is impossible. It is philosophically impossible that Jesus is the only way. He doesn't agree with philosophy. But that is the truth. At the end of the day, everyone will come to find out that the truth is the fact they ought to hold on to. Amen. David, even though it was not written in the Old Covenant, that he spoke those words, Psalm 110 verse 1, by the Holy Ghost, Jesus told it to us that anyone who speaks the truth has done that by the Holy Spirit. And he said, David, speaking by the Holy Ghost, in the book of Mark, we are back to Mark chapter, chapter 12, David, speaking by the Holy Ghost, David said, for David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thine full stool. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2. That's a prophecy. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and let's read from verse 2 and 3. Acts chapter 2. Verses 2, verses 3 and 4, I mean to say, not 2 and 3. Irajaman, Jariba, Irajaman. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, divided tongues. And it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as what? The Spirit gave them utterance. And the Spirit gave them vocabulary, gave them words. As the Spirit made them to speak plainly, as the Spirit makes them to say. As the Spirit makes them to speak. As the Spirit gives them the appropriate words to declare. Truth can only be by the Spirit of the Lord. By the Holy Ghost is the source of every divine, all divine utterance. Glory be to God. And how do we know that these people are speaking truth? How do we know that? Look at what they said. Glory be to God. Look at what they said in verse 6. Now this was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not, this, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Emites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and in Asia, in Phrygia, in Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, that's languages, in our languages, which is naturally unacquired, glossa. Glossa is a language that is naturally unacquired. That's the meaning of the Greek word glossa. Irajaman, jariba, irajaman. We had them speak in our glossa, our tongue, 
the wonderful works of God. They were declaring the wonderful works of God, and that's truth. The wonderful works of God. For example, you made the heavens and the earth. For example, you created the sun and the moon and the stars. For example, the, you made the earth, you made the sea and everything that is in them. Amen. For example, you commanded the dry land to come out of the water. The wonderful works of God. You made man on the seventh, on the sixth day. You rested on the seventh day. The wonderful works of God. You made the mountains, the valley. You made the sea. You made the sky. All those are the things they were saying. The wonderful works of God. Glory to God. These were the works that amazed David in the days of old. He said, when I look at the heavens, the wonderful works of your creation. He said it in Psalm 91. In Psalm 19, rather. And then he began to say, what is man that you, that you are mindful of him? When I look at the skies which you have made, these things are wonderful to him. They are wonderful. Psalm 8 and then Psalm 19. You can read the entire psalm. Glory be to God. It was a wonder for David. And then the apostles were declaring those things in different languages which were naturally unacquired. They were speaking glossar, a language they never learned. Glory be to God. Anytime you see anybody speak divine words, whether in a language the person has never learned, or the person is speaking a plain language naturally acquired, but what they are saying is the word of God, is the truth. That is by the Holy Ghost. And someone will say to me, Ulushola Demola, there are others also who don't have the Holy Ghost that speaks in other tongues. Like the Allah show people, they speak tongues. Other tongues, because tongues is just a language you do not acquire. That's what it means. It doesn't have to be by the Holy Ghost. All right? The one that is of the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is the one that gives it to you utterance. So people can speak in tongues or whatever language. They have powers and forces that can give them utterance to do that. What about the Hindus? The Hindus, they speak in tongues and they prophesy. The, the witches, they prophesy. And the sorcerers, they prophesy. So are you? is that also the Holy Ghost? No, that's not the Holy Ghost. What they say is not the truth. It's a lie. And listen, a lie does not mean what is false. Biblically, a lie is what is not the word of God. That's a lie. A lie is what is not truth. A lie is not necessarily what is incorrect. But a lie is what is not truth. Do you hear me? The opposite of truth is lie or falsehood. That's the biblical definition. Meanwhile, lie is not equal to incorrect. Just like truth is not equal to correct. Lie is not equal to archaeologically incorrect. Philosophically incorrect, that's not a lie. A lie is something that is not the truth. Something that is idolatrous, that's a lie. They make it a lie, the Bible says. And when the Bible speaks about making a lie, that means that they are, they are, they are consulting a medium, a power that is not of God. And how do we know which is God and the God God? It must be of Christ because Christ is the image and the express, the manifestation, the expression of God. That's Christ. If it is not of Christ, it is not of the true God. First John 5 verse 20 told us, First John 5 20 told us that Jesus Christ is the true God. All others in verse 21, 20, 21 of First John, all others are fascism. That is, they are a lie. They are fascism. They are a lie. They look like the truth, but they are not the truth. They are idols. 
Glory be to God. Give me 1 John 5, 21 in maybe Amplified Bible. Let's see what the Amplified Bible is. Irajaman, Jariba, Irajaman. Irajaman, Dariba, Irajaman. Glory be to God. Yes. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, first God, from anything and everything that will occupy the place of your heart, the place in your heart due to God, from any sort of substitute for him that will take first place in your life. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Praise God forevermore. Revelation 22 verse 15. They make it a lie. And when we look at this lie, Revelation um, 22, 15, everyone that will not enter into the kingdom of God, they make it a lie. That's falsehood. The opposite of truth. What am I saying to you, brothers and sisters? What am I telling you? I am saying to you that every other thing that is not of the spirit of God is a lie. It's a lie. As you are filled with the Holy Ghost, which means to be influenced by the Holy Ghost, so you can be filled with Satan. And I said earlier, not everyone that speaks truth are necessarily born again. Anybody or anything, whether angel or man or animals, can speak truth as long as the Holy Ghost desires to make them do so. Do you hear me? All right. I've told you about the ass of Balaam. Now, let me show you the high priest. High priest does not believe in Jesus. That's John chapter 11, verse 52. John 11, let's read from 51. 51 and 52 together. The high priest Caiaphas, in that year, did not believe in Jesus. In fact, was one of the primary architects of those who are seeking to kill him. In his heart, he has the thought of murder. He hated Jesus. And he was going to do everything together with other chief priests like Annas and the rest to make sure that they killed Jesus. And let's see what the Holy Ghost made him do. In a council whereby they are plotting to kill Jesus, in a council full of hatred, in a council full of wickedness, in a council full of evil and darkness and filled with the thought of murder, see what the Holy Ghost did. John 11, 51 and 52. Oh, I missed my point there. Um, from 50, it's supposed to be from 50. 50 and 51, not 51, 52. 50, 51. Praise God. All right, thank you. No, oh my goodness. 49, please. 49, 49 to 51. 49 to 51. All right. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. Is that true? That's the word of God, that Jesus should die, so that the nation will not be destroyed. Look at what the Bible says. And this spake he not of himself, because no man can speak truth by himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. That's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God forevermore. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 46 of that same book, same chapter. Verse 46. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus has done. 47. Then gathered the chief priests, notice the plural, and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we for this man doeth many miracles? And if we let him just alone, verse 48, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. A gathering of conspiracy. 
a gathering where they are plotting evil. Caiaphas, a man filled with envy and bitterness for Jesus. The Holy Ghost moved him to speak truth at that instant. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You can be filled with Satan. To be under the influence of Satan. I give you an example. Ananias and Sapphira. The book of Acts, chapter number 5 and verse number 3. The book of, let's even read the entire story. Beginning from verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and beginning from verse 1. The Bible told us in that book of Acts that but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and kept back part of the prize. His wife also being private to it. That means she was in support of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Amen. This thing they did, they never knew that they were filled with Satan. Until Peter, who was filled by the, with the Holy Ghost, spoke the truth. The word of God. And look at what he said in verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, pay attention. Why had Satan filled thy heart? Just like the Holy Ghost can fill a man. And don't forget, being filled by the Holy Ghost is not that they pour Holy Spirit into a container. Amen. It's not that you are like a vessel and the Holy Ghost is now poured into you like a liquid and you are now full. Some people believe that in their theology that you can be half filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be quarter filled. You can be 0.1%. You can be, for example, now, if you are a 20 liter vessel, you can have one liter portion of Holy Spirit. You can have two liters. How many Holy Spirit do you have? You say, I have 10 liters. Some people can have 15 liters. Some can have 12 liters. And so when they are filled, then they are 20, 20, 20 liters. That's not the meaning of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost means to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's what it means in the Bible. That's what it means. And being filled with Satan is to be under the influence of Satan. But to receive the Holy Ghost is to have the Holy Ghost in your heart. You become a temple for him. That one is exclusive to the believers. He is a spirit that the world cannot receive. Not that they can move them to do whatever he wants them to do, but they can receive him as a gift, as a possession. It is not a promise unto the nations. It is a promise to, to the people that hear the gospel and believe and to the people as long as the Lord our God will call. In Acts chapter 2 verse 39. Glory be to God. It's a spirit that the world cannot receive. But because they see, he seeth him not, and he does not know him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So Satan, verse 3 now, we're, we're looking at verse 3. But Satan filled, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that not true? Is that correct? Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. Ananias was filled with Satan. Amen. But Ananias never knew he was under the influence of Satan. He just came to his heart. Keep some part of the money. Don't give everything. Amen. But the devil has an agenda. He wanted to mess up Apostle Peter. He wanted to ridicule him. Not knowing that the Holy Ghost who sent him has not left him alone. Glory be to God forevermore. Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4. While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, we apostles, but unto who? Unto God. Glory be to God forevermore. The devil cannot speak truth. I can give you countless examples. He went into the Garden of Eden to meet Eve. What he spoke there was a lie. He said they would never die. It was a lie. They died. Both spiritually and physically, they died. And we are still dying today. 
He went to David. He said, number Israel. And although Joab told him, don't number Israel. It's against the law of God. He went and said, number. He, David wanted to brag about the number of soldiers that he had. But he lied to him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees who thought they were protecting their seat, giving them, quote and unquote, by God, the devil lied to them that killing Jesus will make them retain their position. He lied to them. He told them that Jesus Christ was a plague that needed to be dealt with. It was a lie. The devil lied to Judas Iscariot, thinking that whatever was in his heart, hey, give me that piece of silver, I will hand over. He lied. The devil cannot speak truth, has never spoken truth, although that lie can be historically correct, can be archaeologically verified. But that does not say that it is from God. For example, now, if I say that the Crusaders did not happen, I will be historically incorrect. Because there was a time in the history of Catholic that they were killing people who do not subscribe to their theology and subscribe to their, to their order of worship. They were killing them. So if I say that didn't happen, I will be historically incorrect. If I say that happened, I will be historically and archaeologically correct. But that does not say I've spoken truth. But the truth of the matter is that it was not God who moved the crusaders to kill people. And so when anybody comes up and say the church was killing people, no, sir, no, man. And say your Jesus sanctioned the death of other believers. No, sir, that's not true. That's correct, but it's not true. It was Satan who moved them to do that. And what did they labor for? Vanity upon vanity. Did other denominations not spring up today? Don't we have countless people who worship God, not after the order of the Catholic today? They labored in vain. Hallelujah. A lie can be historically verified. But once it is not the word of God, that is not the truth. That's not the truth. Glory be to God. No Abba Habalist. No Habalist. No Isheshe woman. No voodoo man. No sorcerer. No sorceress. No witch. No wizard. No necromancer. No atheist speaks truth. If you see anybody at all says anything that is of the word of God, it is by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But only a believer can continually and perpetually speak the truth. Do you hear me? They can continually and perpetually speak the truth. So speaking in tongues among Hindus, among the Shashi people, is all a lie. Because what they are saying is not the word of God. And because it's not the word of God, it's not of the Holy Ghost. It's not of Christ. It's a lie. The devil does not have any other business than to speak a lie. If they give a prophecy, it's a lie. It is not the word of God. What's a lie? A lie is that which is not the word of God. They may say that your father's name, my father's name is Ademola. That's correct. Hallelujah. My wife's name is Oluwatosin. That's correct. Your ministry is the reporter's ministry. That is correct. But it is not the truth because it is not the word of God. And so how do we differentiate that which is correct and from that which is the truth? How do we separate that which is correct from that which is the truth? That which is the truth is sourced by the Holy Ghost. Sourced off the Holy Ghost. And it ties you directly to Jesus. It connects you directly to Jesus. Anything that connects you to anything outside Jesus is not truth. It's not the word of God. It's not the word of God. It is not possible for a Hindu to prophesy and prophesy and prophesy and say, believe in Jesus, be baptized, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, and then your sins will be washed away. That can never happen. 
It can never happen. John chapter 8 and verse number 44. John chapter 8 and verse number 44. And we'll round up with this. The Holy Ghost is the source of divine utterances. Glory be to God. John chapter 8 and verse 44. John 8, 44. Now, hear the word of God. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Please pay attention to this word. Let me read again. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. From when? He has been killing. To kill spiritually means to hate. He that hated his brother is a murderer. Amen? Do, we, do you get that? Do you get that? All right. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. He did not continue in the truth. He used to be in the truth. But he didn't continue. Because there is no truth in him. Are we together? When he became a devil, does he have 1% truth in him? What about 0.1? Is there any iota of truth in the devil? No. The Jesus said clearly, there is no truth in Satan, the devil. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And the father of it. Give it to me in contemporary Bible translation. Maybe Holman Standard Christian Version. Or maybe, um, yeah, let me see, H HCSB. Glory be to God. He speaks from his own nature. When he tells a lie, he did what? He speaks from his own nature. If the nature of the devil is lie, he can't speak truth. Are we together? Stop comparing other religion with that of Jesus, Christianity. Christians are not like every other people in the world when it comes to divine utterances. Hallelujah. And if there be any form of contention whatsoever, I want you to believe that although the rod of the magicians of Pharaoh turned to snake and the rod of Aaron also turned to snake, what happened? The snake that came out of the rod of Aaron swallowed up the snakes that came out of the rod of the magician. Are we together? The divine word that is by the Holy Ghost is nothing compared to any word spoken by any herbalist, by any witch doctor, any sorcerer, any magician, any idolater of whatever sort or whatever kind. In any age, the word of God is the word of power. Is the word of power. Remember the story we have read before in previous fellowship about Simon the sorcerer. Philip kept and preached the truth. He swallowed up everything Simon the sorcerer has done for many years. Swallowed it up. Barnabas and Saul with Sergius Paulus. All the activities of the sorcery of Elimas the sorcerer for whatever how long he has been with um, Sergius Paulus. The gospel of Jesus swallowed it up. Hallelujah. As a believer, now pay attention to this as we close. As a believer in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, you must seek to speak truth all the time. You must seek to make sure that your utterances are divine. Remember the word of the Lord in 1 Peter chapter 4. He said, let him that speak, speak as an oracle of God. If you are going to open your mouth in our age, in this generation, I charge you, my brothers and my sisters, my elders and my fathers in the faith. But let me concentrate on my generation, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, my elders by age, 
an experience of being with Christ. If you must speak, don't speak fast. Don't speak archaeologically correct things. Speak truth. Let him that speak. First Peter 4 verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. Let him that speak. Speak as an oracle of God. The Holy Ghost is the source of divine utterance. Speak as an oracle of God. Glory be to God forevermore. Glory be to God forevermore. The book of 1 Peter. Do I have my scripture correctly? Verse 11. If it's not verse 10, it should be verse 11. Is it that 10 or 11? Is 11 correct? Okay, 11 is correct. Give me verse 11. You can give me that translation that you have already. Glory be to God forevermore. Hmm. If anyone speaks, his speech should be like the oracles of God. Is that suggestive? Or is it compulsory? Is this a suggestion or a command? If anyone will speak, please, brother, if you will speak in tongues, your tongues must not sound like the tongues of the Seshe people or the Hindus. Your tongue cannot be monosyllabic. No! You say, I can actually convert all the 26 alphabets into tongues. What's the next one? You know, that is not speaking divine utterance. That's like gibberish. That the Hindus speak. When you speak, and when anybody grace to interpret or grace to have the natural, not to have the natural tongue that you are speaking, they must know that you are you are talking about the divine works, the works of God, the wonderful works of God. Let him that speak. If you are going to preach, my brothers and sisters, preach by the authority of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm leaving you with in this seventh day of fellowship. Let him that speak, speak as an oracle of God. If you speak, you must speak as an oracle of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let's bring this meeting to a close. Glory be to the Lamb of God. When you declare anything, it mustn't sound like an Hindu message. It mustn't sound like a Buddha message. It mustn't sound like... Let me ask you a question, brothers and sisters. When they said Odudua in African mythology, Yoruba mythology, that Odudua, Oteworo, he came down with a chain. Is that true? Is it truth? That's not a truth. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's not even historically correct that a man descended with a chain from heaven and came down to the earth. That's a lie. Your doctrine must never sound like them. Your practices must never look like them. The Holy Ghost is the source of divine utterances. And that which he speaks is truth. And what is truth? The word of God. Verifiable by the Bible. By the Holy Scriptures. If he doesn't verify it, my brothers and sisters, you are not speaking as the oracle of God. The church is so modeled up, I am just telling you by the Spirit of the Lord that the church will come to a great differentiation in this, our generation. There will be clear demarcation between right and wrong, between truth and false, between righteousness and unrighteousness, as God lives and the Spirit lives. There will be light and it will be clearly distinguished from darkness because Jesus does not look like any of these deities. Jesus is not like any of the days. To the glory of God the Father. He is the Son of the living God. Who died and rose again on the third day. Glory be to God. Speak as an oracle of God. Amen. Do we have any word from anyone? Give God thanks wherever you are. Any comment from anyone? Give God thanks wherever you are. You have a question, you can ask your question please. At any day or any time you see this, um, um, this fellowship video, 
you can ask a question any day, any time. Go ahead and give God thanks. Let's praise his name. We have fellowship with the word of God. And the word of God that came to us today is that the Holy Spirit is the source of divine utterance. And by divine utterances, we mean truth. The source of truth. To the glory of God. That's the Holy Ghost. And the word of God is truth. The words of Satan cannot be truth. There is no truth in the devil. No truth. Zero truth. No truth in the devil. God can use anyone to speak truth by the influence of the Holy Spirit. But only a Christian can abide in the truth. Caiaphas spoke truth, but he didn't abide in the truth. Because his heart was full of wickedness. Not the spirit of the living God. Give God praise and appreciate him. Thank him. Bless the name of the Lord. When the next time you will speak in tongues, allow the Holy Ghost to give you utterance. Do you hear me? Don't try to speak in tongues to impress anyone. Or to make them know that me too I can speak in tongues. No. Make sure the Holy Ghost gives you utterance. The next time you will preach, let it be by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him that speak in the church, Paul wrote to the people of Cappadocia, Bithynia, and all these others. You can read 1 Peter 1 1. 1 Peter 1 1. We are still praising God. He wrote to his audience in 1 Peter 1 verse 1. And in verse 2, 1 Peter 1 1 to 2. He wrote to his audience, I can't remember it by heart. He said to the provinces of Pontus, Galatia brethren, Cappadocia brethren, Asia brethren, Bithynia brethren. And then in verse 2, according to the foreknowledge of God, he wrote to all these brethren, he said, let him that speak, speak as the oracle of God. Hallelujah. Africa brethren, Nigeria brethren, South Africa brethren, Turkish brethren, brethren in Bahrain, in Malay, all the brethren in Saudi Arabia, American preachers and Christians, one and two together. Anything, anywhere, anybody, speak as an oracle of God. Speak as an oracle of God. To the strangers, Cantar throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. And I can increase the list by the Spirit of God. I can include Afghanistan brethren. I can include Israeli brethren. I can include Nigeria brethren, Ghanaian brethren, Ethiopian brethren, Libyan brethren. I can include South African brethren, Miami brethren. I can include United States brethren, United Kingdom brethren. I can include Chinese brethren. Egyptian brethren, I can include Argentina, Mexican, I can include all the nations of the world today. If you speak, for verse 11, speak as an oracle of God. Give God praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Anytime you preach, anytime you give a counsel, let it be according to the word of God. Divine utterances is according to the scriptures, according to the word of God. That's when your word will carry power. And then your world can swallow up all the words of the witches. When a witch says something, you can undo it and say it will not be so. When a sorcerer says something, you can cancel it and say it will never happen that way. Who can say a thing and it comes to pass? Except the Lord commanded it. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 37, if I'm not mistaken. Who can decree a thing and it will come to pass? Except the Lord commanded it. Give God praise and thank him. 37. Give God praise. And give him praise. Give God praise and thank him. To the glory of God. 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 If you say a thing, you want it firmly established, you don't want it to be overturned, it must be by the mouth of the Lord. And that Lord is the Spirit. I already told you. I already showed you. The Lord is that Spirit. And once he says anything, it is divine. Settled. No witch. And turn it around. No Hindu can turn it around. No deity can turn it around. No power can turn it around. They are divine utterances. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you forevermore. We thank you. Please listen to this advice. 
May you be blessed forevermore through this fellowship. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And then we have fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. We have come to the end of our fellowship for the month of April. By the grace of God, we'll go. We'll be around again by the month for the month of May. 1st of May to the 7th of May. 1st to 7th of every month, 9 p.m. Nigeria time. We'll have fellowship. All the audios, you can find them on Audioma. Um, uh, visit our, our channel on YouTube and on Facebook and follow us <clears throat> for more videos and the full information of whatever you are hearing um, as privilege of grace to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and amen. Glory be to God. Now that you have heard this message, part one to day one to seven, go and do something with it. And you will see that the Lord is gracious indeed if you hack into this world. The Lord is your blessings and may his peace continually rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God bless you and be with you. Let me have a word of prayer with you before we go. Father, in Jesus, your holy name, as we have prayed earlier, let all denominations' door be open for the gospel. Empower all ministers of the gospel all over the world. Let truth go forth in Jesus' name. Let falsehood be arrested. Let lies be arrested and casted out. Let people who are under bondages be released by the truth of God. For you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Let this generation be termed the generation of the people of Christ. The generation of the people of Jesus. The generation of the people of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Let a little of us be a nation by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Let the earth be filled with the knowledge of your glory as the water covers the sea. In the name of Jesus. Let the reporter's ministry, Lord, fulfill purpose in this age. Keep us away from falling. Keep us standing even till you will return in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for sending us this grace at this time. Blessed be your name. We return all the glory back to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you. See you in the May edition. And have a good night. Blessings.